Today, I'm going to show you how to retouch a male headshot. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm super excited about today's episode because we're gonna show you, this is basically a continuation of our last episode where we showed you guys how to light a stunning portrait using DIY lighting kit for under $50. We showed you guys on how to actually create the DIY lighting kit as well as tips on working with light, talking about the difference between main light fill light and accent light. And to finish it up, we actually talked about how to work with a model to get the best expressions in your portrait. Now in this episode, we're jumping into Photoshop. We're gonna show you how to get rid of skin imperfections as well as how to even out skin color. We're also gonna color tone the image as well as add a background glow that's gonna really make this photo stand out. All right, so here's our image for today. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we're actually going to be working on. Now, Harrison's got great skin, and generally, even if you're photographing someone who does have great skin, we're still gonna be doing a little bit of retouching on pretty much every portrait that, that I come across anyway. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new layer here. So we're gonna just click on a new layer, and we're gonna go ahead and start targeting some of these smaller areas in this image. Again, we're not looking for like huge global changes. This is mostly like smaller skin imperfections. So for this tool, what I would recommend is grabbing the Right here under the healing brush tool, you can see there's a spot healing brush tool, and then under that there's the regular healing brush tool. I recommend using the regular healing brush tool for this type of retouching. Okay, now what we're gonna do is zoom in and start basically getting rid of little areas like this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to create a sample point, and what you wanna do is sample the skin quality or the skin texture that you actually like. So we're gonna sample this area here, and then I'm gonna paint right over top of this area. So Alt or Option and click to sample, and then we're just gonna go ahead and start painting in over different areas. There we go. And basically, this is all there is to this technique. It's very, very simple. Just sample the area of the good skin that you like, and then paint right over the area that you wanna actually change. So I would recommend doing this for you know any type of scars or acne or even just you know little hairs and things like that. And Really just, you know, you can be pretty quick with this. This is a tool that doesn't really take a whole lot of focus or you don't even have to really pay attention to what you're doing for the most part because it does most of the work for you, which is, well, it's just really nice. So um, what we're gonna do is just continue kind of painting around in this image. And anything that really catches my eye or stands out, um, I'm just gonna get rid of. Now, when you're retouching a portrait, especially of a male, it's like I, I generally won't go too far. If we're doing like a female portrait retouching, for instance, I'll usually make the skin a little bit smoother. Um, but with a male, usually I'm just looking to get rid of uh, blemishes and things like that. We're not trying to get it like, you know, porcelain smooth skin or things, you know, anything. Men tend to look a little bit with a, they look a little bit better with a little bit of gruff on them anyway, in my opinion anyway. So just things like, you know, like these little scars and little areas like this, or maybe um, missed a couple areas shaving. So we're just gonna kind of clean those areas up. And for this section, I would recommend, you know, spending about five minutes just going in here really nice and um, getting rid of all these little areas with the healing brush tool. Now, my other tip is try to leave any areas that are like, if there's something that's gonna be there the next day and the day after that, Try to leave those details in. So things like moles or you know identifying facial features, leave those areas in because that's part of what makes the person. So there's a like a mole right here and a mole right here. Um, I'm not going to retouch those out. I, I think those are really important to leave in because they really you know they are who <laughs> they define you as a person. They're not going to go away. Any areas like you know a, a, a change from like shaving or whatever, um, I'm totally okay getting rid of those or you know little pimples and things like that. But um, yeah, especially moles, I, I really recommend leaving those in. All right, so here we are and we're almost done. Basically, I'm just sampling the area. Now, as far as settings go, when you're using the healing brush tool, um, make sure you're using right here in your settings, you're gonna wanna make sure your mode is set to normal and your sample is set to current and below. That's gonna make sure that you're actually able to paint this on a new layer. It's, if your sample is set to current layer, you're not going to be able to do this on a new layer. All right, so we can spend some time cleaning this up. And you can see I'm pretty well zoomed in. We're at 200% zoom here. So I can really get a sense of what these 
skin textures actually look like at the pore level. All right, and we're almost done at this point. Now, when we finish this up at 200% zoom, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more, and then we're gonna be able to see what the image looks like um, from a little bit broader view. And what that's gonna do, let's just go ahead and zoom out now. What that's gonna do is allow me to see some things that maybe I didn't see when I was super zoomed in. Um, just, you know, variations like, you know, this, this little variation here, that's not really like a, a you know, a pimple or anything like that, but it is like a little bump in the skin. So even something like that, I'm gonna retouch that out and it's just gonna help smooth things up a little bit more. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right, so I recommend zooming in and getting everything done basically from like a really close zoom and then zooming out afterwards and retouching the image a little bit more it's just so you're gonna see things at different levels of zoom. All right, that's looking really, really good. All right, let's go ahead and look at what that looks like before and the after. So here's our before. You can see just a lot of little blemishes. You might not have even noticed them when you were first looking at the image, but here's the after, and you can see that all those things removed just really does help clean this up. All right, next we're gonna jump into actually retouching some of the red areas in his face. So when you're retouching, you're gonna run into a super common problem, and that's color variation with people's skin. And in this case, Harrison's got like a couple little red blotches in his skin. I think it's basically he just shaved right before the photo shoot. So it's probably just, you know, little areas, little razor irritation. So that's actually not that difficult to remove. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we're talking about here. And it's these areas that are like red in his skin. Now, technically these aren't blemishes. I'm not gonna use like a healing brush to get these gone because they're, they're, they're not actually part of the skin, they're just a difference in color. So what I need to do is target that actual skin tone and then change it back to the color of his skin. It's really not that difficult to do. So to get there, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer. We're gonna go down to hue slash saturation. Okay, so we have a hue saturation adjustment layer now. And what we're gonna do, if we change the master color, you can see my hue is just gonna change the color of the entire image, which is not what we want. Let's go ahead and undo that. We wanna change our color from master, we're gonna go down to reds. And this is just gonna allow me to change the red colors in the skin. So to get a better idea of what we're actually affecting, I'm gonna crank my hue up just like that, and we're gonna go ahead and crank our saturation up. So you can see it's basically affecting everywhere on the image right now, because a lot of his skin is actually red. You can see it's not affecting the shirt because the shirt isn't red, but everywhere that is red is now turned to a really bright green. Now I'm only cranking those numbers up so we can actually see what we're about to edit. The next part is where we can really dial into just those specific red areas. So we've cranked these values up and now it's basically turning the skin green, which is again, just so we can see what we're doing. And down here we have a slider that actually controls the specific reds that we're actually going to change. So what I wanna do is click inside this slider and now I can move this to the right or the left. And we can see as I move this to the right or the left, it's only gonna affect some areas of his face. In this case, it's affecting more of the yellows in his skin. Now we can see, you can see the, the red areas are still there. They're not being selected. So that's not what we want. So we're gonna click here and I'm gonna move this to the left now. All right, so it's not affecting his entire face. We just wanna have it affect those other skin tones. There we go. And we can see that's what's kind of like lighting up right now, right? It's all those little red areas. Now, this is also gonna light up his like lips and areas around his ear and things like that. So keep in mind, if you do wind up affecting more than you need to, you can always use the layer mask to actually dial that down a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good actually. This is, again, just a selection. So we're gonna take our saturation down to zero and we're gonna take our hue down to zero as well. So we basically are not making any changes at this point. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And what we can see is I've got the area selected I, that I want. That's right down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this hue slider and I'm gonna just drag this to the right. And as I go from left to right, you're gonna see, like here is way too red, right? As I go from left to right, you're gonna see those areas just kind of disappear and they're gonna turn right into skin color. So let's just turn that layer on and off so we can see the difference that makes. It just completely gets rid of that red. Let's bring that up a little bit more. There we go that red color variation, and we'll zoom out and see how it looks on the entire image. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. And here's the before and the after with that. Very cool. Now, you can see it actually does color his lips. So what we're gonna do is on the layer mask, 
we're going to paint black on the layer mask to make sure that he gets his original lip color back. All right, so there we go. We've got our skin color variation as well as our blemishes. Cool, and we're ready to do some coloring. So there are two things I want to do when I'm coloring this image. The first is actually I want to add a background, like a glow around Harrison. It's going to really help him stand off from the dark background. And then we're going to actually add some color to the image as a whole. So to get this glow, this is going to be really cool. What we're going to do is I'm going to create an adjustment layer. We're going to go to our adjustment layers and then down to levels. Okay, now we have an option here to affect the red channel, green channel, blue channel. By default, it's going to be on RGB. So I'm going to take my red channel here and we're going to take our output level and I'm going to slide this from the left to the right. We're going to go down to, let's just type in about 20. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to take our green channel and I'm going to slide this from the left to the right as well. All right, somewhere right about there looks pretty good. Now you can always change these values later if you need to change them. Not a big deal. Okay, so basically we've just made our darks a little bit lighter, kind of like a light, nice light brown. I just thought it would be a good color that kind of contrasted with the image. Okay, let's go ahead and close that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Command I on the layer mask and that's going to invert the layer mask, making it black, making the layer invisible. Now we're going to grab our gradient tool and here with our gradient tool, I'm going to paint white using a radial gradient. So if I would just click right here and drag out, you're going to see it just creates like a, a light gradient right there. Now we're going to actually click right here in the middle and drag out in this way. There we go. Let's do it once more, which kind of creates a light gradient right around our subject. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the layer with itself. We're going to put a layer mask on the group and then I'm going to paint black on the layer mask over top of our subject. So the reason I'm using a separate layer mask here is because I don't want to affect the original layer mask of the gradient. The reason is because I, I want it to be a perfect circle. I want it to look a lot more organic. I don't want brush strokes and things like that to be actually showing up inside of the layer mask. So basically now I'm just painting it away from our subject and then I have a separate layer mask for our, there we go, for our radial gradient. All right, and I'm going to paint it right up until the edge of our subject's clothing and then we're going to do a little bit of a blur and that's going to help it make it look a little bit more natural. There we go. So this layer mask now is going to get a blur. So let's click on this layer mask. We're going to go to filter, down here to blur. There we go. And I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. There we go. And we're going to choose a blur that just makes everything blend in and look really nice and natural. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we hit OK. All right, and there we have a little bit of a glow right behind our subject. So let's just turn this off and on. Just kind of help separate the subject out from the background and get a little bit nicer color. And we can change this at any point in time by going into the levels adjustment layer and simply moving the levels around. And the last thing we're going to do is just color tone the image to give it a little bit more of a classic look. To do this, what we're going to do is grab our adjustment layers. I'm going to go down here to levels. And we're going to go right over here. Instead of our red and green channel now, we're going to actually play with our blue channel. We're going to go to blue, and I'm going to click and drag this from the left to the right. There we go. It's going to add some blues into my shadows. And then we're going to take this side and add some yellows into the highlights. This just kind of creates a really nice classic portrait look. There we go. Very nice. Let's turn that off and then on. All right, let's go ahead and crop our image. We're going to change our, we're going to hit our crop tool and changes from a regular ratio to a one by one. In this case, I would just want to use a square. So we're just going to hit the left and right arrow keys to kind of get this centered about where we want it. That looks pretty good. And hit enter and we're good to go. That's an awesome portrait and you guys can see it really didn't take too long to edit. Let's look at the before and after. Cool, here's our before and the after. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I hope it helps out the next time you go to edit a male headshot. Just remember a couple key things. We focused on using the healing brush tool and focused on sampling areas of good skin and replacing it over small blemishes. Then we went into skin color correction, using a hue saturation adjustment layer to specify exactly what reds we want to change and then shifting those hues so they looked a little bit more natural and blended into the rest of his skin. After that, we added a nice glow around our subject and changed the general overall color to give it a little bit more of a classic look.
If you like what we're doing here at Flearn and you'd love to learn more from us, just hit that subscribe button on your screen. We release free Photoshop videos every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question about today's episode, just leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, guys, and we'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Cool, let's do it. All right, so here's our image. All right, so here's our image. So here's our image. So here's our image we're editing. So here's our image we're editing today. <sighs> here's the image we're editing today. And so here's the image. All right, I haven't done this in a while. Rusty.